Hello, and welcome to this vSuite version 0.4 video tutorial. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to cover the basics of doing or using Radiance's photon mapping capability. Um, Radiance is what's called a backwards ray tracer. So it sends out rays from the camera or from the point of view. And those rays hit the scene and they bounce around the scene until they find a light source. And that's very efficient in a way because it means we're only simulating the rays that will end up in the camera, end up in our, from our um, view perspective. So we're not simulating rays that don't contribute to how the scene will look. Um, but the problem with that is that you, uh, the rays can find it difficult to find a light source. If we're doing a simulation outside or we're doing a render or visualization of a scene outside, that's not a problem because the sky is big, light is coming from the sky and the sky is very large. And rays we shoot from the camera find it very easy to find a light source. But in an interior scene where we might have very small windows or the windows might be round a corner and they're obscured, the rays we fire from the camera can find it very difficult to find a light source and we can find then that our results are uh, very noisy, very random. Um, the visualizations are, uh, are pretty ugly. And photon mapping can really help in those situations because photon mapping, basically, instead of just sending out rays from the camera, we first send out rays from our light sources. And they sort of uh, illuminate the, the surfaces within the scene. And then when we send out rays from the camera, um, we don't have to trace the rays all the way back to the light sources. We just have to trace the rays to the level of light that has, that has hit different surfaces within the scene. So that's kind of a, a brief rundown of the value of photon mapping. Uh, now, if I just take the default cube, uh, I'll scale it up, and I'm going to introduce... Um, I'm going to call the default material for the cube, uh, I'm going to call it walls, and I'm going to introduce into this simple room, like skylight, and this face up here, I'm going to give that a new material, so a new material slot, assign that slot to that face, new material. Uh, I'm going to make that glass. I'm going to make sure that in my VSuite material panel, I go from my matte plastic material to glass. And um, I might do one here as well. And I'm also going to make that glass. And I can change how that material looks just so I can tell which of my materials are glass and which are my just my matte plastic diffusing wall surfaces. Okay, fine. Uh, I'm going to create a sensing plane so that we can get some numerical results out. I'm going to lift that off the floor slightly, scale it up, and subdivide that. And you'll see a little bit more detail about these uh, plane creation, how to create sensing planes in the first simple radiance analysis video tutorial. Uh, that plane has to have a material as well. I'm going to call that material sensor. And I'm going to make sure that instead of geometry, that is now a light sensor. Um, and I'll make it, instead of plastic, I'll make it antimatter so it doesn't appear within the, doesn't get factored in as geometry within the calculation. Uh, so I'll just open up my node editor, create a new node tree. Uh, I'm going to need a VI location node. 
I'm going to need a Libby geometry node to process the geometry. I'm going to need a Libby context node to create a sky. And I'm going to need a Libby simulation node. So if I connect my VI location node to my context node, and I'm just going to have Ooh, I'm just going to have a sunny sky. Oh, I've got to save my file. I forgot. Right, my sky. I'm going to use the faces of my sensing geometry as sensors. I'm going to change that to faces and export that. Now I'm just going to and now we see that we have this photon map option within the Libby simulation node. Now I'm going to do it first without photon mapping turned on and I'm going to look at the scene. I want to preview the scene with ren uh, Radiance's preview capability. So I'm just going to move my camera. Let's put you, ooh, I'm going to put you in the corner there. I'm going to rotate you. I'm going to look at the scene from that perspective. I need to come down a bit as well. Okay. And I might just change my camera focal length so I see a little bit more of the room. Okay. So if I was to now preview that, I'll get a preview of this scene from the camera's perspective. So it'll take a little while to fully resolve itself, but we can already see it's pretty noisy. Um, and even if we were allow this, um, allow this to resolve itself, as far as it goes, um, it's still going to look pretty noisy. And this is because the rays from the camera that we're shooting into the scene are finding it a little bit difficult to find a light source. Now, I could improve that by switching to a higher accuracy. What that will basically do is it will bounce the rays from the camera around more and because they're bouncing around more, they're more likely to find a light. But it takes much longer for the image to resolve. But we can see the image is basically coming out a little bit cleaner. Um, but it would still be pretty messy, especially up here. If we fire a ray from the camera and it hits the floor at this point, it's quite easy for that ray to then bounce up and find a light source. But rays that hit the wall over here, they find it much more difficult to find a light source. So this is still going to be pretty messy up here. Um, so I'm going to turn on photon mapping so that we can see the difference that makes. So I'm going to go back to low quality. I'm also going to turn down uh, the reflectivity of my walls because I know it defaults to 100% reflectivity, which is a little bit unrealistic. Um, so now that I'm in, um, I'm back in low accuracy again, I turn on photon mapping, but I've forgotten something very important, and that is that not only do we have to turn on photon mapping here, but it's a very good idea to also create within a model what are called photon ports. So when we, when we ask Radiance to do a, a photon map, Photons are being sent out from the light sources to try and illuminate the scene. And specifically for us, we want those photons to illuminate the interior of this room. But Radiance doesn't know that we want the photons to land in, in the interior of the room. So the photons are coming from the sky and the sun, and they will just be emitted by the sky and the sun randomly. And only very rarely will a photon emitted by the sky or the sun come in through this glass aperture or through this glass aperture. So if I was to turn on photon mapping and if I was to press calculate now, it would take a very, very, very long time. 
because 50, we've set it so that 50,000 photons have to arrive within this room, within the camera's viewpoint, um, for the photon map to complete, and that'll take for ages. So what we do is we create photon ports, and photon ports tell Radiance where to send photons to arrive within this room. And the photon ports for us will be our two glass apertures. So if I go into edit mode, and I pick these two objects, or these two faces, that have the glass material associated with them. First thing I need to do is to make sure that the normals point inwards. So we can see that for this face and for this face, the normals are pointing outwards. We don't want that. We want the normals to face in a direction that we want photons to pass through the glass. We want photons to go from outside to inside. So with those two faces selected, if I press W for my specials menu and flip those normals, I can now see that that normal is pointing inwards and that normal is pointing inwards. So that's fine. They're set up now and we can usually see they tend to become a little bit darker when the normals are facing in the other direction when we do that. Um, what we also have to do is the glass material associated with those faces we turn on photon port down here. And once we've turned on photon port, Radiance now knows that when it does a photon map, it should send photos specifically at these surfaces. And because these are the only two surfaces in which light can enter the room, it makes the photon mapping process much, much quicker. So now the photon map context is set up correctly. I can now preview that. Uh, oh, it's asking me. Oh. And because I've made these changes, I need to re-export my geometry. So if I now preview that, two things will happen now. First, the photon map will get created, and then the actual preview simulation will take place. But we can instantly see that we now get much smoother results within this scene. Um, the light is being brought in through the photon maps and it's bouncing around the space and now when we do our backwards ray trace it's easier for the rays to find a consistent level of lighting within the room. So this is even better than, the, you know, we're on only on low accuracy so it still um, happens pretty quickly but we get much more even illumination results, much more realistic illumination results in the scene and even on the medium setting without photon mapping. Um, if I just close that down. So we can also see that if we do a calculation. So if I calculate the numerical values, and if I just make this object a little bit transparent so that we can uh, find object, pick up transparency, and I make the um, oh, let me just no, let's do it this way. I might turn on wireframe as well. If I now display those results. Um, we can see, yeah, we can just about see the influence of this window over here. I could just reduce my legend scaling slightly so we can see a little bit better what's going on. So we can see, yeah, we've got a little bit of influence from this glass aperture up here. We've obviously got influence from the skylight above, but it looks um, a bit random. If I could it's a bit random and it's very very centered within the middle of the scene directly below the skylight whereas in fact especially because we've got very reflective white walls in this room we would actually see it in real life a much more even distribution of lighting through the space so if I was to again turn on photon mapping and calculate and redisplay that, 
we now see, yeah, we get a much more even pattern of illumination through the space. Much more realistic um, levels of illuminance or lux as we have um, presented, displayed here at the moment. So photon mapping is really good when you would imagine that light's being sent out from the camera's perspective, or when we're doing a numerical analysis from the perspective of the individual sensor points. If we imagine that rays shot from those points would find it difficult to find a light source, so small windows, interior scenes, small windows, or interior scenes with um, artificial lighting, then photon mapping can a, really improve the results, and B, get those good results much quicker. So it's worth turning on in those scenarios. Outside simulations with a, a bright sky, a sky that's delivering light into the scene, it's not so important because it's very easy for those backwardly shot rays from the camera or from the center points to find ultimately a light source. Um, and I think that's everything I need to say for photon mapping. Um, Okay, thanks for watching. Ah, I've forgotten one thing. Just as well I remembered before I stopped recording the video. Um, there are two types of photons that can be shot from the light sources to create our photon map. One is global photons. So these are photons that hit uh, diffusing surfaces and scatter diffusely through the scene. And we also have something called caustic photons, which I didn't turn on within this scene. Caustic photons are for when we have shiny surfaces. So we have a surface which is gonna take light from a light source and send it uh, very much in a certain direction. So sh shiny materials, metals, mirrors, so on. And that sort of caustic, that shininess characteristic that is specified in our material panel by specularity. So our plastic materials have low specularity, so they're pretty much diffuse reflecting materials. And in this scenario, we only need global photons because they globally sort of bounce around the space. Caustic photons where light reflections are directional or caustic shiny materials where light reflections are directional, it's good to turn on caustic photons. And you can experiment with um, the numbers here. I've got 50,000 and zero by default. You can have 5 million global photons and a, and a million caustic photons if you're looking at how uh, very detailed shiny geometry like light redirecting devices for example, blinds in windows etc, how they perform. Um, but now I think that really is everything. Okay, thanks for watching.